Hello everybody, welcome. Great to see all of you today. Today I like to make a video about all the seasons of change that we go through in our lives and how we choose what type of attitude that we decide to live each and every day. What we put our attitude and where we put our efforts and just let us shift our perception in life to make it better, to make it more positive and that we may be able to live a good, fulfilled, joyous, peaceful life in and through Christ. I wanted to show you, here I am in Big Bear Mountain, enjoying the fall nature. And we go through the seasons in life. You can see behind me, there are some baby Christmas trees even waiting to be birthed out. And right now we're in the fall season, soon to be the winter Christmas season, and the spring and summer, and all of that. What season are you in today? Seasons of winter maybe for some people are the challenging and struggling times that you may go through. You may feel so weary and heavy burdened, full of worries and anxieties, but did you know it says in the scriptures that God, he puts in the bottle all your tears that you have cried. How personalized is that? And God also says he puts our name, a tattoo on the palm of his hand in ink. So he remembers us. He loves us individually and cares for our well-being. And he wants us to live this abundant, fulfilled life in and through Christ. Well, I just turned 55 years old. Woohoo! I just had a birthday in October. And I must say, with complete assurance and all sincerity, I am living my prime. And it was not hard to get here to this place, but I have created this fulfilled, joyous, peaceful life with abundant love each and every day. And how I got to this place, I'd like to share with you. I was mindful to choose to live each and every day with walking in the steps of God's Spirit, with ease and with grace. We all have a journey of life and the path that we choose to walk and live in each and every day. We can choose the right path, the wrong path. We can make so many mistakes in our lives. But I encourage you today, that is okay because that is going to shape you. It's going to help to make and mold you to who you are today. Personally, I've been through so many things in my past. And boy, when I look back, maybe if you were to ask me years ago, I may have had some regrets. But again, I have lived life to the fullest and I have experienced so many things, so many circumstances, so many emotions in my life, good and bad, in every sense. And boy, if something was to happen to me where I may have got into a terrible car accident, let's say, we never know the number of our days. You know, we may know of loved ones who have passed away. And I must have heard this week four people who have passed away from a loved one that they have known. It was crazy. I just kept hearing numerous, numerous stories of people telling me they lost their mother, their sister, their brother, their husband in so many different ways. It might have been through the force of nature. It might have been through illnesses or cancer. It may have been through COVID. Who knows? But again, we have our last breath. And here I am to encourage you. I heard from one of my friends. She told me when she lost her sister, which was beautiful, when her sister passed. And she shared with me this that I'd like to share with each and every one of you. She said, my sister died. She had her last breath on earth, but she has her first breath 
in heaven. And as believers in Christ, what a joyous way to end our last breath on earth, knowing we will meet our Heavenly Father in all His grant and glory and have our first breath in heaven. Meantime, as we're all of us are living in this earth, let us do our darn best to live each and every day with grace, with ease, with fulfillment, love, and joy. Again, I am living my prime at age 55, and I have created a life where I worked very hard by being intentional and being very mindful to live it out the best way I can in and through God's Spirit. I love Colossians 1.27. It says, I have made known the mystery to the Gentiles. And the mystery is Christ in me, the hope of glory. It can't get any more powerful, profound, significant, and beautiful than that. As children of God, God has given us the spirit that lives inside each and every one of us, the resurrected power of Jesus. And once you tap into that power, wow, you become a fearless being. You can stand your ground up high with your chins up, knowing that you have almighty God's power in and through you, and you're able to conquer out each and every day, no matter what the day may look like for you. Let us respond in a good way when we are faced with the brutal challenges in life each and every day. We have that power to choose. And rather than giving in to or reacting in a negative way with a bad attitude, let us be mindful to challenge ourselves and take that deep breath and say, God, I proclaim your power, your resurrected power of Jesus within me. Challenge yourself and see how your day can just pan out for you with God's grace and his ease with peace. You will be so surprised and overjoyed. But meantime, be okay with when we do have those struggles and challenges in our lives that God is doing something really good within each and every one of us. He's building up our character to be like Christ-like and His being all for His glory, for we are being transformed. You know, back in 2010, I called it my transformational year. Each year thereafter, I gave a theme name on my calendar for the year. In 2010, when it was my transformational year, I went through a very difficult time when I had my bicycle accident in 2008. I was down in the dumps. I was depressed. I was challenged with all my cognitive skills, had no energy, was zapped from me over and beyond. Why? Because I had a post-concussion syndrome. When I hit my head on the street pavement, I felt like an earthquake was shattering in my brain. For a long time, it was a hard, spontaneous, random bicycle accident. But God knew what he was doing. In and through our pains in life, it can be so brutal. And we get scared of the unknown. Am I ever going to get any better? Am I ever going to get stronger again? Is my life ever going to get back to normal again? And some of you might be questioning that right now with all that's going on in this world, with this whole pandemic and everything, the government and just all of this crazy <laughs> insaneness that we just have to raise our eyebrows and question a lot of things that do not make sense. But let us trust in God's good sovereignty today. Let us learn to just push up our sleeves, build up our faith muscles, and know that our sovereign God is in control. It's like mother who is in labor about to give birth to a baby. And when you're going through the process of giving birth to a baby, 
you just your stomach just grows as the baby grows and when it's time for labor to push out the baby you go through these hard excruciating labor pains it is so uncomfortable and you wonder how much longer is this going to last and you just wonder and you feel like you're dying at times you can just cannot breathe they're trying to focus on the pain and you just want that baby to hurry up and come out we get so impatient but let us learn to have more patient for soon as the baby comes out through the birthing canal it will come out and how glorious a new birth will come from that hardship that we must endure through whatever hard, difficult tunnel, dark tunnel vision of whatever challenges you may be facing right now. Believe there is that light at the end of the tunnel and how glorious and grand that will be indeed. So let us each and every day, every morning, wake up with a good attitude and know in and through Christ, we can do all things. For God says in Philippians, he gives us the daily strength that we need. Let us be encouraged to pray for wisdom and discernment today. Discernment is something that you just know. Like, okay, God, we have to look beyond what we see, but there is a bigger plan and purpose. There is a bigger per picture up ahead and wisdom will take us there let us follow wisdom in our hearts today our intuition the small still voice that God is speaking to us and go through the decision makings that follows along with peace that will help to guide you each and every day in what direction you must take and once you follow God's path you will be amazed where he can take you I love Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. We all have our own God-given journey in life. What does your journey look like today? What is your season? Are you in the winter season, the time of difficulty and struggles and the fears of the unknown? Know that spring is just around the corner. Know deep within, with your patience, take that breath. Trust that God's Spirit lives inside of you. How powerful is that? And you will birth out something new, something glorious, something amazing, something grand that you may not even ever dreamed of. It says in Ephesians that... I will give you more than you can ask, dream, or think about for those who love me. We can't even phantom or imagine what, how God works in our lives. Our, mind, our minds are so finite where God's mind is infinite and grand. Let us not limit and put God in of our box. No, let us step back, reframe, our whole spirituality of knowing and being in a close relationship with God. God wants us to draw closer to Him. He wants us to touch Him in our spirit. Let us, our spirits with God's spirit join, be synchronized today. Let us be aligned with His will and you will be amazed where He can take you to. I'm a thoroughly enjoying my season of life. Like I said, I just had my birthday month, October, celebrate it to the max, and I am such at a good place in my life. I even told my children, if anything was to happen to me where an unfortunate circumstance happened and I was to pass away, I told them confidently because I have created the life to this day with all intentionality and I was being mindful of the choices that I make directed by God's Spirit and through discernment and wisdom with support, with love, with friends and family that the life I've created today is so fulfilling and so much peace, so much joy, so much love because again, I worked so hard at it 
with a lot of intentionality of doing what is good and what is right and choosing to walk in the good pathway in my life. So I said to my children, I have lived a long journey of my life. 55 years, I am very happy and content. And I look forward to the second half of my life to see what goodness awaits on the other side as I continue to be mindful each and every day to tap into God's spirit. But again, going back, if something was to accidentally happen to me, just know, my sons, my husband, that you will see me with a big smile on my face. I have worked so hard with all faith, trusting in God. Through my journey, God was with me through it all and God is with you through it all. He promises to never leave you or forsake you. Trust in God's goodness today. You never know, life is short. Again, I mentioned this week alone, I heard of four people told me their loved one passed away. How sad and unfortunate but we all run our life's course one way or another. And we will have a time where we have our last breath on earth and our first breath in heaven. How beautiful is that? But meantime, let us enjoy this God-given life to the fullest. For it says in John 10, 10, that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I have come to give you life and to have it abundantly. Let us not live our life in vain. No, let us not live our life in past mistakes and regrets. No, let us live for this present moment and look forward to the many more beautiful days we get to enjoy this God-given life to the fullest. For life, wow, I love my life. And I can say that confidently because I have done my part on trying to live obediently to the scriptures of God's word, his love, his teachings. And God's love is within you and you can spread it out to others. So other people may feel God's warm embrace in and through you because we as believers are expressions of Jesus to other people, other people who may not even know Jesus, but we get to represent our almighty Father, our God on heaven, our King. We get to represent Him by the way we live and by the choices that we make. And the past is a past. If you've made any mistakes, that's gone. Live for today and look forward to your future and live with the inner smile in your face with all joy because again, Colossians, the mystery has been revealed. Christ in you, the hope of glory resides and lives in you. And when we know as individuals, as people, how powerful we are, the enemy is so scared of us. He tries his very best, I'm sure, to distract us, to pull us down, to make us stuck, to make us feel unworthy, insignificant, not valued. What, you're, it's too late to do this or that. Or who do you think you are to do this or that? Whatever it may be, let's take away all the lies of the enemy, but stay strong to God's truth today. Because again, in and through Christ, we are made more than conquerors. We are the warriors in Christ. God sees us in a heart. The people sees us only from the outside, but God knows and sees us from the inside. For God says in the scriptures, he made us and we were created in our mother's womb. He knew us, he, he just made us before we were created in our mother's womb. And he has a good plan and purpose for each and every one of you. Let us just embrace his spirit today and accept God's love to the fullest that even though we may have good days or bad days, have that inner smile with all joy and peace, knowing with all gratefulness, while God, 
Thank you. Thank you we get to live this abundant, fulfilled life in and through Christ because you gave us this gift of life. And let us again be mindful each and every day with a good attitude, with good efforts and good choices, being obedient to God's word and spread his love to others. God bless you. And I hope something that I said encouraged your heart. And again, I am at a wonderful place in my life. And I love being 55 years old. I can say that with all joy and with all assurance because I have known that I got another chance with God in my life when I went through hardships. And God's kindness brings us to repentance. And how beautiful is God's kindness to us. Let us accept it and not shun away from God's gift, but accept it and embrace it and live it out to bring a smile and honor God in all things in our life. God bless you, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.